I wanted to ask you about this. You got teams scoring 130, 140, 150 points. I, it's fun, but what changed in the NBA? Well, we got a lot of bad teams. I think we've all been disappointed in the level of basketball so far this year. Uh, we, When the season started, we had high hopes for a bunch of teams, and they're just not showing up. And uh, the bad teams are really bad. And when you factor in no defense, uh, teams are, uh, and you can have one of those nights where you make some threes against a bad team, you're going to have a lot of blowouts. But 150 points. Well, that's inexcusable, Dan. That's just bad team, bad defense. I mean, that's got. I mean, you got no pride. I mean, you really seriously. You got when you give up that many points, you really don't have any pride defensively. I mean, that's uh, when you're giving up. I think this. I think they had 80 points at halftime. Yeah. When you when you're doing that, you just you're, you're not even trying defensively. But it feels like there's a new philosophy instead of milking the shot clock to get a shot off in seven seconds or like everybody's sort of adopting what the Rockets have done with Mike D'Antoni. Well, I think it's actually they trying to adopt what the Warriors did when they won a championship uh, X amount of years ago. Everybody just shooting threes as quick as possible now. Uh, there's no mid-range game. And you just shooting threes, and you see they got Dan. I said something last year. The Warriors, who have they had the three greatest shooters who probably ever lived. There were seven teams in the NBA shoot more threes than the Rockets. Oh, excuse me, than the Warriors. That's absurd. How can the team with the three greatest shooters who ever lived? How can you have bad basketball players shoot more threes than those guys? <laughs> I mean, think about it, Dan. I know. I mean, the, the Rockets are an anomaly because that's the way they do. But there were six other teams in the NBA shoot more threes than the Warriors. That's absurd. I mean, I mean, it's just flat out absurd, plain and simple. You all in on Luka Doncic? Yeah, I like him. I like to see him get Porzingis involved more. I watched him play a couple times. Uh, like Luca's balling, but I would really like to see him get Porzingis more involved, and also I like to see him, especially when he, uh, when Luca's not in the game, because I watched him play last week against the Clippers, and they just got stomped when Luca couldn't do his thing, yeah. and I was like, feel free to pass the ball to Porzingis to get him going. He's a stud, uh, but. When they played the Clippers, like I watched the entire game, took notes and everything, and Luca had an awful game because uh, you know those guys got the two best perimeter defenders in the world on one team, but they never passed the ball to Porzingis except when he's standing at the three point line. I mean, I'd run some plays to get him the ball down low, uh, to get him some easy baskets. Uh, so, but they don't do that. They just get a ball to Luca and say, "Go do it," and that's not going to work against the good teams. James Harden, you know, you like he got 60 points in 31 minutes. I, I, should he be pacing himself? Because I always, this is my big knock on, on, you know, the Rockets and James Harden. Once we get to April, May, then it feels like they run out of gas. No, they're just playing against the better teams. Uh, uh, the, the good, the, when it, and that's the thing about the playoffs, Dan. That's when you play against the good teams who have strategy, who have coaching, who not going to let you do everything you want to do. I don't think they run out of, I mean, nobody runs out of gas. I mean, you, you, you're playing every two or three days, uh, so you're, you're not tired. But, you know, the other team's like, nope, you're going to do something different. We're not going to let you uh, – the refs don't call as many free throws. I bet if you look at James Harden free throws, he's probably shooting five to seven less free throws a game in the playoffs than he does during the regular season. But the refs let you play just a little bit more. But the main thing, you, you're just playing against the best teams. But, man, you put up 60 in 31 minutes of work – you know, maybe. I've said this. I said, first of all, I'm not comparing James Harden to Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. But James Harden is the best offensive player I've ever seen with today's rules. With the three, uh, he's a, a terrific three shooter when he gets it going. He can drive. He's physically, uh, physically strong. Uh, but when I said that last year, people looked at me like I was crazy. I said, this guy's the greatest offensive force we've ever had in the NBA uh, from a little guy. I mean, Kareem's the greatest, him and Wilt are the greatest scores for big guys. But as far as guards, 
this dude is the best offensive player ever. Because Michael and Kobe weren't great three-point shooter. James is a really good three-point shooter, uh, and he can drive on anybody because uh, he's because he's because he's got a great body. I mean, he, he he's strong. He's athletic. I mean, he has it all. Yeah, he invites contact, and you know, Jeff Van Gundy was on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he said that you can't have your hands in front of you guarding Harden because Harden will always initiate contact. Van Gundy said, have your hands out to the side and let him take the three-point shot. You have, to cho- you have to choose. You can't try to shut him down on both, you know, going inside or shooting threes. He doesn't miss free throws. I don't want him in the lane at all. And I, if, 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 if he's going to take the three and he puts up 25 threes, then okay, I, I'm going to have to try to survive with that. What do you think of that logic? Uh, I don't like that logic to a certain degree. I like what the Denver Nuggets, he's played against two teams in the last two weeks who doubled him every single time yeah. when he ran the pick and roll. I would play him like that because those other guys ain't good enough. I mean, passing the ball to Clint Capella uh, at the top of the key uh, is not going to hurt you. But th- th- they played against the Denver Nuggets about a week and a half ago. They doubled him every single time. And I forget the second team that did it. They Both of them teams beat them pretty good. I would double him every single time. Say, okay, uh, Capella, uh, you know, uh, anybody else can make a play. I don't think they can make enough plays to win four out of seven, but I would double James Harden every single play. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune into Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.